Coming up today, learn how to make an oversized beach bag just like this. Welcome back to Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to learn how to make this oversized beach bag. It is so simple, it's not even funny. In today's tutorial, we're going to dissect some of the components. We're going to put it together, and you're going to have a beach bag in no time at all. So without further ado, let's head back to the studio, and let's get started right now. Here we're back at the studio and now it's time to just decipher the pattern a little bit before we get into the actual tutorial work itself. So the pattern is free. There's a link in the more information on this video to access this pattern. It's absolutely free for you to use and we're also using cotton today. These bags are so much better in cotton. They will hold their shape and they are so much more stronger than acrylic yarns. So we're going to be using lily sugar and cream today. Now when we're working with this particular bag throughout the entire bag we're always going to be using two strands at one time. So you have to make sure you have to double up on your strands. So it's not just going to be one string, it'll be two. And what you'll see in the instructions is that there's different uh, color options that are available to you. So for example, say you want to use solid colors. This is in the first section right here. You'll see that contrast A, B, and C have the number of balls that are required. But if you'd like to use ombres, okay, they're very much like variegated colors of the lily sugar and cream. Those balls are slightly smaller, therefore you'll require more of those. So it just gives you an opportunity to mix and match. Don't be afraid to go outside of the, the box or color outside the lines to come up with your own cool color options as well. So the size hook we're working with today is a five millimeter size H. You'll notice that the requirements for the uh, the ball itself is five millimeter but we're going to be using two strands at one time. Why are we doing that? Because you want a great strength bag. So by doubling up on the yarn just like so it'll be a lot thicker and the bag will stand up on its own and it'll be a lot nicer if it's done in two strands. So let's determine how many things that we need to do in order to accomplish the bag from start to finish. Well there's four sides. So you have one, two, three, and four. Two of the sides opposite to each other are identical and the other two are identical to each other. They are different sizes. So the, on the lengthwise this is longer than the ones that are up here on the side. Either way you gotta do the work so it doesn't really matter which ones that you start with first. You also have a bottom piece. It's simply just simple crochet. It's just a big square on the base that we're going to attach. And then you have two hands handles and that makes up your seven. You're also going to notice with this particular pattern is that we're going to be joining the yarns together. I'm going to be showing you how to carry yarn instead of cutting yarn each and every time because we know how much you love that and so then that makes it a lot easier for you to be able to manage. Now I will tell you that the stitch work here is identical to what you see over here into the side panel like so. All it is is that it's just a, a smaller panel itself to, therefore there's less stitches. We have to be paying attention to the most is right in the top line here. It's right before you do the final two okay waves is that there is actually a hole that is actually crocheted into it on both sides of the panel. So this side and the opposite side and that's the only thing you really gotta watch for when you're doing it and I'll show you that in just a sec. So as you noticed in the intro the bag is pretty big. It's actually a really great size for hauling all your towels and lunch and blankets and everything to the beach. You'll notice that these are the holes and this is where the straps are going into. So there's one here and then one on the other side before it gets to the end. So then that's the only thing that you really gotta pay attention to. And then what I just did is that I carried my yarn going up on the side and so when I go to be able to put this together I'm gonna leave that yarn on the inside of the bag so that you'll never see it and therefore I didn't have to cut any yarn. So here is the side panel just like so. So it's a, a much smaller addition. Uh, all you have to just make sure is that you're watching your colors. So for example when the bag goes all the way around and I'll show it back here on the photo is that you see that the red here matches the red on the side. So if that's important for you make sure you're paying attention to your color transitions and then it becomes really easy. So what you'll notice here in the pattern is that you have white and then a color, white and then a color, white and a color. That's the, con that's the regular thing that you see. So in my case it was orange. Okay, so you see orange is between all the different colors and so when this color here for example is way up here I had to carry my yarn over and all the way up. So if you prefer not to cut yarn that's how you do it but if you wanna cut it then you can do so as well. 
So let's work on this tutorial in order as it is on the pattern and we're going to start off with the front and the back panels. They're both identical to each other so what you do on one you just do it on the other. Really easy to follow. All you just have to do is just watch for those holes right in the top piece right there. You see that? And then that becomes your only thing that you really need to watch for. This goes a lot quicker than you think and it's just how you get started is the same on all of your panels front, back and the both sides and it's just a matter is that the side panels are just a little bit uh, shorter so that it's not as wide. So let's uh, begin and let's grab your hook and the yarn now. So in today's tutorial I'm just going to start off with a slip knot. I'm going to show you how to get started and once you understand how to maintain the pattern it's just really easy and then I'm going to leave it to you. I'll show you how to do that hole in the top of the panel as well and then we move along into the side panel and then the bottom and then the handles. So without further ado we're going to just chain a 49. So remember the one on the hook that start with does not count. So we're just going to go one and two. Do you see how I'm using two strands of yarn here? So I'm just putting them together. Okay, so they're two different yarn balls like so. So that was one and two, three, four and five and go all the way to number 49 and meet me back here in just a moment. Okay, so now I have my 49 on here. Now to get started is the same for each one of the panels and it makes a lot of sense but you just gotta trust in it because once you see it done once you'll see it uh, that it's actually a consistent thing. So we're gonna go second chain from the hook. Turn the chain upside down so you get the back hump only. It just makes a beautiful look to it and just go in and single crochet. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to single crochet the next three chains as well. So there will be a total of four single crochets in a row on the outside edge. Remember that because that is a kind of a consistent thing throughout the entire project itself. So that was, that was two, three. So with the one I've already done you have a total of four. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to start creating what appears to be a, a hump. Okay, so it's actually gonna appear to sink down even though it's appearing to go up. It makes sense, you just gotta trust in it. So watch this. So the first one is going to get a, a half double crochet. And when I did this originally I was thinking I was out to lunch but it makes sense in the next row so you just gotta trust in it. So the next two are going to be a double crochet each. Okay. So the next two is one double crochet into each and then we're gonna get smaller again. Let me just retry that one while I'm talking to you. So this is a double crochet. So we're gonna get smaller again. So the next one will be a half double crochet and then what we need to do is that we need to go eight in a row on the chain of just single crochets. So this is actually one part of the actual valley. So it'll make sense in just a moment. Let me just get you to the next eight. So the next eight single uh, will be single crochets. So one and two, three, four, five, six, I didn't get all the plies there. Make sure that when you're working with two you get them all. So this is six and seven and eight. So now the first one that we created is actually one of the, the waves. So what you're looking at here is that it looks like that we've done the wave and it's gonna appear to go up but in actual fact what's gonna do it's gonna appear to go down when we come to the next one and it'll make sense in just a moment. So the next one is going to be a half double crochet and the next two will be one double crochet into each. Okay and now we're gonna get smaller again. So we're gonna go half double crochet. Okay and now the next eight will be a single crochet. So do that. So just a single crochet one into each of the next eight chains and I'll meet you back in just a moment. So I now got my eight in here so we're gonna get bigger again. So where the next one will be a half double crochet and then the next two will be a double crochet each. Just one into each. So this is establishing the wave pattern that you see on your on your uh, bag. 
So the next one we're gonna get smaller so it's gonna be half double crochet. And so then the next eight will be a single crochet each. So continue to do that and I'll see you back in just a moment. We're coming close to the other side. So then I'll show you how to finish off. Okay, so I just did another eight and so I'm gonna get bigger again. It's gonna be a half double crochet. I'm coming close to the edge here. So it'll be a half double crochet to get bigger. The next two uh, chains will be one double crochet each. So you already know how to do that. And then we're going to go the next one is a half double. So if your math is right, you should only have four stitches left. And how I know that is A, because I'm familiar with the pattern, but because we started off with four single crochets on this side, we should finish off with four single crochets on this side after the half double crochet. So just finish up the, the chain. So it's just one, it's just single crochet, two, three, and four. Okay, so I know that I haven't screwed up anywhere because I've run out of chains and I'm right where I should be. So this is what it looks like at this point. It looks kind of um, warped in some way but it's the next uh, particular one that gets it all to be balanced. So let's begin the next row. So the next row is the same thing that you're going to be doing for every other row going forward. So the starting off one that you just did is the only time you're ever gonna do that. And so the next row is going to be something you're doing every other one and then we'll establish the single crochet row as we go. So to begin we're going to chain up three, one, two, and three. And we want to come into the very same stitch itself because we're creating the wave and we're going to double crochet. And this causes it to have two double crochets into the same one and you need that when you see this pattern coming out. So the next three are going to be one double crochet each. Okay, so three in a row will be one double crochet each. Now the next two okay that you have will be a two together double crochet. So you're going to make two stitches into one. So you wrap the hook, go into the stitch just like you see and pull through and then yarn over and pull through two and hold. And we go into the next one. So yarn over and go into the next stitch for double crochet, pull through, pull through two and hold and now you'll have three loops on your hook and so we're going to make these two into one by yarning over and pulling through all three. And we wanna do that twice in a row. So that was the first one. So let's do it again. So wrap, going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Wrap, going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Now you are now ready. So you're just gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. So this actually, if you can kinda see it, it's kinda going down and then this is kinda sweeping up to do the, the, the wave. So the next three are going to be a double crochet each. So there's always gonna be th uh, three standalone stitches in between the tops and the valleys of your wave. So this is the three uh, double crochets by themselves. Okay, and so the next two, this is gonna be the top of the wave. So the next two is gonna be two double crochets in there. So while we got rid of an extra stitch in the, by just doing the together stitch down here, we're actually putting an extra one up over here. So then, so there's two into that one and then there's two into this one. And this creates the rounded tops of the waves. So you're adding more stitches to create the top of the wave here and decreasing the amount of stitches here to create the valley of there. So the next three are going to be a double crochet each. Okay. So we're at the bottom of the wave and so what do we do? We put two together again. So we wrap going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Wrap going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Okay, now you have three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three. So that was one and we have to do that twice. So we have to do this twice every time we're at the bottom of a wave when we're uh, doing this, uh, the double crochet line. So now we just pull through and then we come back up the other side so it's three double crochets. Okay, and they're all by themselves as we're working our way back up the valley. Okay, the wave is starting to kind of take effect. 
kind of see it going on. It's not a huge over top of the wave. It's, it's nice and uh, casual. So the next two are going to be two double crochets into each one because you're at the top of the wave. And so then you do it again. Okay, so two in a row we'll have two each and then we're coming down the wave. So it's just one double into each one for three in a row. Get that done and then you're coming back, or you're at the bottom of the valley so it's together again. So two together. I'm gonna speed up. Okay, pull through, pull through. Okay, and do it again. Go back up the hill so it's three double crochets by themselves. So one, two, three. And you're at the top of the hill so the next two will have two doubles into each. Okay, so you do that twice. So that you, okay, so you're at the top of the valley. Just like you see. And now we're coming down. So it's just three. So while I'm continuing the pattern, so what's gonna happen is that every other row is like this. It doesn't matter. Um, it's all gonna be like this. And so the row in between is gonna be all a single crochet. And we're doing very close to the same thing but it's all gonna be in single crochet instead of double. Okay, so now I'm doing the together stitches because I'm at the bottom of the valley. So the critical part is the very ending. So remember when we started I had you put an extra double crochet into the very beginning. Well we have to make sure that we do that on this side as well. So we're gonna come up the valley, we're at the bottom of the valley, we're gonna come up and it's one uh, a double crochet into each of the three. And then the final stitch which is number four is going to be two double crochets into that same stitch. And I don't want you to finish the second double crochet. I want you to just to leave it partially just like this and wait for me because we're gonna change color at this point. So this is what we have at this point. You can see the wave is starting to take effect but now we're going to change color and get started for the next. So I grab my next color and I'm gonna create a slip knot. Okay, and we're ready to move up to the next row. And so I had you finish like this so that you don't actually finish your final. I want you to take your new color and put it on and pull it and finish that stitch. And let this pink one go. We're not gonna cut this pink, we're just gonna carry it up going up the other, uh, going up when we need it again. So let's turn our work and move up. And this is always what's going to happen on the every other row. So we've already established that this is what's gonna happen every other row. Here's what's going to be in between those. To start this row we're going to start off by chaining one and then coming in the top of the same double crochet we're going to double our single crochet twice. So one and two. So if you notice before we did the same thing that we put two double crochets into the same. Well this time it's two singles instead. So we're gonna come down the valley. You can see that it's kind of protruding downward over here and then we're gonna come up. So we're gonna start off by going down. So the, the first things that we're going to do is that the first three stitches will be a single crochet each. Okay, so instead of a three doubles by themselves, it's singles this time. And now we're, because we're in the bottom of the valley, the next two are gonna be come together with a single crochet together decrease. So we're just gonna go in, pull the yarn and leave it onto the hook we're gonna go into the next stitch, pull the yarn, leave it onto the hook and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. And so these two single crochets just became one. We have gotta do that twice in a row. So we did that with the double crochets but now we're doing it with the singles. So we yarn over, pull through, go into the next one, yarn over, pull through. Okay, and then pull through all three. So you do two in a row and so that eliminates a uh, stitch for each one and so then when we come back up to the top we have to do the same thing what we did before. So the next three are going to be one single crochet by themselves. As we work our way back to the top of the hill. And so you can always tell where you are. So you see that there's two there. This, these two that we're about to do will always be in the middle one here and the middle one here. So you see that they're in the group of two. It's always the two middle ones and they'll have two single crochets each. So these will always happen when it, you're at the top of the valley. 
Okay, let's go down the hill. So we're going to go one single crochet for the next three. Okay, we're at the bottom of the hill. So we're going to start collecting your stitches. So a two, uh, two single crochet together decrease. So in and in, pull through and do it again. Okay, so then those two just became one again and coming back up the hill for three singles in a row. Okay, you're at the top of the valley. So there's gonna be two or the top of the hill. You're gonna have two single crochets and then again two single crochets in the next one. Okay, and they're right in the middles of your groups of two that you did. Okay, so we're gonna come down the hill. So three singles by themselves. So use the top, the tops of the hills and the bottom of the valleys to make sure that you're staying oriented, oriented, orientated into the right uh, particular wave because if you're off by one it actually makes a visual difference. So the next two are together because you're at the bottom of the, the wave and the next two are together because you're at the bottom because you gotta do that twice and then come back up the hill three singles. Make sure that you get all your, your plies and strands. Okay, at top of the hill, so the middle two will have two singles into each. Okay, and then down the hill, so there's gonna be three by themselves. Okay, you're in the middles of the valley in the bottom, so there's two are gonna become one, and you do that twice. Okay, so here's what we have. We have actually four stitches left. So we're gonna come up the hill. So there's gonna be th three singles by themselves. Okay, and don't forget this chain counts as one stitch as well. So we're gonna put two into the final of that one. And the reason why we're doing two into the final of that one because when we started I had you put two um, single crochets into this one here. So to maintain this pattern you have to do on the other side. So this side of the pattern we're never gonna uh, change our color and basically it's just going to be looking like this. So this is the single crochet line that you're going to do every other one and so we're gonna move back to doing the double crochet line but with this yarn color instead. So we already covered what you know in the pink but I'm gonna get you started. So we're just gonna chain up three, one, two and three and then coming back into the same stitch for a double crochet. So those you've just put in two into the same one if you classify it that way. So we're coming down the valley as you can see. So it's gonna be three doubles now by themselves. One, two and there's going to be a third one by itself and then we're at the bottom of the valley. So the next two are going to become one. So we're gonna do the decrease just like we did with the, the pink. So the next two are gonna become one with the decrease, two together decrease and then the next uh, two are gonna become one as well for the two together decrease. Just like that. So now we're going to move up and go up, up the valley or up the hill and we're going to do three singles by the, or three <laughs> double crochets by themselves. Sorry about that. My brain just wants to do this stitch because I know what I'm doing with this. So once you have your three in there, you're at the top of the hill. So then you gotta put in two doubles into the same one and you have to do that twice. So you do it to that one and to the next one. And that's the very top of your, your hill. So now you're gonna move down the hill again. So this is what basically all it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you continue to go on your particular panel and I'm gonna show you in the next part of this tutorial on how to do that um, hole for when you get to that spot and you can actually look at the actual diagram or the actual. So in the next part of this tutorial what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to be able to make that hole that appears in the top of this panel once you get all the way up there. Just look at the photo and see where it's going in and then you can eye it out for yourself as well. It does have instructions also to follow to know where to put that. It, the hole is so easy it's not even funny and it's just a matter of paying attention to your two panels and it's only appearing on the front and the back side panel anyway. So just uh, continue to do this and I'll see you back in just a moment. I'll show you how to do the hole at the top and you can also come back to this video at a later time uh, once you're ready for that particular part of this tutorial as well. 
So I'm coming up to the end of this particular uh, row and it's I'm doing the together decrease here again like we would and it's just a matter of finishing it off like we did with the pink and it's just a matter of it's a different color that's all it is. So we're just going to go up the hill with three doubles in a row and we are ready now to change color again once we get that far. So remember we've got three by themselves and the final stitch that you see is going to be two double crochets but to change the color on the final double crochet that I'm about to do don't finish it off just grab your color. So if you're carrying colors all you just have to do is just drop this color just pull this one a little bit tighter and just use it to pull through just like that. So when you go to do that you wanna make sure that the string is somewhat loose here Okay, you don't want it to be too uh, tight because then the project will not stretch naturally. So therefore you're ready to go. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the holes and the holes appear on the actual um, pattern right at the top of these two here. So you have your edge, you have your edge and so the holes then appear right up here and I'll show you how to do that next. So we're now moving forward in the instructions but the panel is obviously not big enough so you have to make your panel big enough and you can look at the photo in order to judge where that should go. Also written instructions as well to be able to tell that as well. So we're going to create a holes into the top of the first top of the hill and into the third one over okay and it's just a really simple idea. So we're just going to continue to do the single crochet as normal. So we chain one and we single crochet twice into the first one. Okay, so you already know how to do this and you're going to then just come down the valley. So just three singles by themselves and then the next two are together. So here's the, the cool thing about it. So we're gonna come up the valley and we're gonna do three singles by themselves and then we are going to chain four. So one two, three and four and all we're just going to do is that we're just see how you got the group of two that are right in the center. We're just skipping over the two middle ones here. Okay, those would normally were, would have been the ones that you put in your two double crochets into each as you're at the top of the hill. So you're chaining a four, you're skipping over the two and then coming back in and you're just continuing the, the row as normal until you get to the other side of the panel and do the same thing. So we're just gonna put these together. I found with myself when I don't trim my uh, yarn at the end of each one of the, the rows it actually goes a lot faster so you just gotta figure out how to bury it in afterward. So the middle one here, this is the middle hill is gonna be as normal so you're gonna put in your two double crochets. You're gonna come down the valley as normal. So three singles in a row. Okay, you're at the bottom of the valley so the next two are together and the next two are together and now we're gonna come up and now this one's gonna have a hole. So the next three are by themselves. One, two and three and simply chain four. One, two, three, four, skip over the two middle ones and then come down the other side or go on the other side and just continue the pattern as normal. So that was one and then the next two are by themselves. Okay and then the next two are together. And same with the next two are together. Okay and then we come up we're gonna finish this uh, particular row off. So the next three are by themselves and then you should end up with one last stitch which I have and that'll be two single crochets into that final stitch. And we're not changing color we're just continuing along and we're gonna move to the double crochet line next. So right now you have your first established hole into both sides just like this. So turn your work. So this is how you go on once you get to this run. We have to put our stitches where the holes are in order to continue the pattern to maintain itself. So we're on the double crochet line so we're just chaining up three and then just double crochet into the same one. So you already know how to do this and we're coming down the valley. One, two and three. 
10, the next two are together. And then the next two are together. And now we're coming up the valley. Okay, so there's only gonna be two here, but that's okay. We're going to go into the, uh, the next two. They're singles by themselves. And in this hole, you are going to put six double crochets into it. And this happens on the other side as well. So you're going to put in six double crochets into that uh, chain four space. So one, two, okay, three, four, five, and six. Okay, this is maintaining the pattern as normal because what happens is that you have three that are by themselves, then you have the next two which would be considered the top of the hill, the next two are the top of the hill and then there's one by itself and then the next two are going to be single double crochets as well or single um, just one double crochet into each of the next two and then again together Okay, and then the next one's together as well because you're at the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll keep going along and I'll meet you back up to the other side right over here and then I'll show you what to do again if you've already missed it. So I'm continuing further along in the line and simply I'm just going along the next two are together and so are the next two. And so you will end up with two stitches that are by themselves before you end up with this um, chain four gap and that's right so there's gonna be one double into each one of those and then you're into the hole okay and you will put in six double crochets into that same chain four space. This is four, five and six and then you're coming down the valley so the next two are going to be one double crochet each to maintain the pattern. Okay and you're back in the valley so it's two together. Okay and the next two are together. Okay and then you're coming back up the hill. So there's gonna be three single crochets and then you've got your final one which will be two double crochets. So if you're following the pattern as normal then you only realize that you have one more row of single crochets and then the final row of double crochets in order to get to the very top of the hill and so you will look at it here. This is the original that I had and so therefore this is the hole that we had so you only have one more row to go. So this is what the entire panel would look like once you have it all the way completed just like so. So the only difference between this panel and then the side panel is the actual width itself. So let me just fold it on top and so you can kind of see if you're following the waves. See the waves are ending up so you're actually finishing at half of this one here and not going the entire width across. So let's uh, begin to do that. So you have to make sure that you do two panels front and back just like so. Make sure you do catch the holes on the front and back because we're gonna be using those later in order to do the handles. For the second part of this tutorial we're going to do the side panels. Now the only difference of the side panels to the front panels are the width. Okay there's absolutely no difference between them. The also the other difference I guess you can say is that there's no holes. So you do your entire panel uh, right from the top to the bottom or bottom to top just really quite easily and uh, this will go much faster because you obviously are not going that much wider. So what you're going to start off today is just chaining 37 and then you're just going to maintain the counts just like you did. So you can reverse this video back to how we started on the, the first panel just like so and it's exactly the same pattern. The only difference is that it's shorter and so you will just make sure that you go all the way across using the same configuration and then at the very end you just finish off at the top and then you're going to make two of these. So I don't think I need to film that once again because it's exactly the same pattern and that's what makes this uh, beach bag so easy to be able to follow along with it as well. So please make two panels of this and then we're gonna start off and doing the base panel next. So here's the base panel just like so. It's all it is a single crochet back and forth. It's a big rectangle and so the front panel then goes to here. The back panels and the sides on both sides. 
very easy to do. I'm gonna show you how to get started with this. Now when you're doing this there's a chain count I believe what we have is chaining of 49 going all the way across and uh, that's just really easy to maintain and then with the tape measure you, you measure your distance and it's 12 inches or 30 point nine something like that 30.5 centimeters um, in this direction if you want to use centimeters in order to do it. So there's no row counting it's just a matter of using your uh, tape measure in order to get it. So let's without further ado let's show you just quickly how to do a single crochet with this. So for the base panel all you're just gonna do is create a slip knot to begin and it says to chain 49. I'm not gonna do that here on camera. I'm only just gonna do a few so you just go all the way to 49. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you're gonna go all the way to 30 or 49 and all you're just gonna do is second chain from the hook, use the back hump only and just single crochet, or crochet yourselves all the way back across. Okay, it's that simple. It's just single crochet back and forth until you get to the size that you want. So because it's single crochet and it's nice and tight at the bottom, you don't have to worry about stuff uh, falling between the stitches on your bag when you go to do, when you go to be able to use it. So that's a great thing, right? So that's why they're using double strand too. It also makes it very solid. So once you get all the way back across, turn your work, simply just chain up one and then single crochet into each of the stitches going all the way back. And you're just gonna continue to do that until you get about 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters and then it says not to fasten off or fasten off your yarn because you're going to be using that particular yarn strands in order to be able to um, start to do the joining process. So we're just going to just chain one and single crochet all the way back. So continue to do that and this is how you would do the panel but obviously it would be a lot bigger but this is the basic principle on how to do that. And it's pretty easy too. So you can get in front of the TV or just sit outside and relax and be able to make one of these bags for yourself. So here is the handles. You need to make two of these. And so the, all they are is single crochet back and forth on the particular um, chain. So the chains are counting as 95. So you want to chain 95 and then you're just going to single crochet starting from the second chain going all the way back and then single crochet uh, again and going. All you're looking at here is that there's actually only two rows of single crochet. So then you have to do two of these just like so. When you're actually going to use this on the bag in actual fact what's going to happen is that the two ends will join each other um, through the holes of the bag and then they'll fold up and then we're going to wrap it in a special way that it makes it really kind of cool at the very top of the bag. So please do two of your handles. Remember chaining of 95, second chain from the hook single crochet. It's just like you would have done the panels at uh, the base of the panel in order to do that. So please do that next and I'll see you in just a moment. For our next trick we're gonna start joining the bases to the actual all four rounds. We're gonna go right around the base just like you see and what we want to do is that we want the wrong side to face up. Okay so if you can determine what side looks nicer um, you can do that. It's really quite easy and what we want to do is that we want to make the next round and make sure that we attach with a single crochet all the next panel right together. This edge that we're about to do is gonna appear on the outside of the bag. So what I want to do is that I want to just grab it okay and I want to start off and put everything together. So I want to make sure that I'm working with both of the front panel okay and this piece at the same time which is the, the base panel. So I'm just going to join it and basically we're gonna join this panel then we're gonna turn the corner and do the next panel. So we're going to join all the panels along the bottom first. Okay so we're just going to just insert our hook into the very uh, beginning um, single, uh, single crochet that we started with and just pull through as a slip stitch and then just going into the next stitch on the front side and to the next stitch on the base panel is that we're just going to single crochet it together. That's how we're going to attach. So we're not actually going to sew anything. We're just going to use a single crochet. Match up your stitches. There should be the total number of stitches to match each other without any problems at all. Because when we did the, the base panel just like so um, there's a number of stitches plus this one here which is the same count. So you're just going to work your way along the base and single crochet your two panels all together. And it's kind of a, just take your time 
don't uh, be too tight with your stitches um, so that it doesn't uh, deform at all and just simply just single crochet together. So when you get to the very other side you're gonna finish off with a slip stitch and then you're going to grab your next panel which will be a side panel and just continue to go all the way around using the same configuration. So I've just come all the way across and I'm attaching it as I go and so once I get to the other side okay I just want to have a slip stitch. I don't want to finish the final one with an actual um, single crochet. So they say to slip stitch it and so now what I want to do is that I want to grab the next panel that's available. So I want to open this up okay and I want to turn it in a way that I can actually um, do with this properly okay and I want to do it so that I can get the next panel on the inside. You will notice that there is a visual difference between the right side and the wrong side on these ones here is that you see how it's kind of bleeding through the color. The other side it's completely solid like that. Okay so that's how I know which is my right side and which is my wrong side. So I'm just gonna grab a smaller panel for this side here and so that I can see that this is on the inside here. So I want to turn this one and I can tell that this is the first color of the base and so basically I want to just line up everything properly okay and along the edge just like so and begin my next one like this. Okay so you want to go all the way around doing the same thing and then what we're going to do then is then we're gonna start once the base is all attached with all four panels we're then gonna take this here and this panel and start sewing up the side or doing a single crochet up the side in order to really secure that into position. So for tutorial reasons I'm leaving the panel just open like so because I'm just moving you along so you understand this uh, pattern uh, more accurately. I actually have a bag done. So what I want to do now is that I want to attach the panels together on the corners that you see within the pattern itself and so all I want to just do is that I want to just attach it to where it already is. So technically this one will be already attached to the base just like you see here but what I'm doing here for tutorial reasons is just speeding along and we're just going to just start off and we're going to just join. So using the appropriate color yarn and we're just going to join in evenly space a single crochets joining both panels together at the same time. Okay and we want to do it so that this join color appears on the outside of the bag. Now if you're like me and you buried or you did all of this extra um, carrying across yarn you want to make sure it's all on the inside of the bag. So when you go to be able to fasten things together and you're just kind of eyeing it up these single crochets you want to make sure that that um, carrying across yarn is always pushed onto the inside so that you'll never see it. So it's just a matter of ev evenly spacing it as much as you can and just working yourself up and you'll have to do this on all four of the, the attachments that you have for this particular bag. And just work yourself all the way up and it's actually really quite a simple idea in order to follow as you go. So it just matter just eyeing it up as close as you can. No exact science. The nicer job you do though there won't be any gaps within any seam lines and because obviously you don't want to have that happen as well. So just work yourself all the way up to the seam all the way to the top of the bag just like so and when we come back we're gonna start doing the handle work next and the handles are actually relatively easy. We've already got them done and now we're ready to be able to put those onto the bag itself. So basically at this moment you should have the base attached already to the panels and then you should just finish off and attach all of the, the sides of the panels together and so now your bag formation is almost complete at this point. Before we do the handle work itself is that we have to do the top edging and the top edging goes completely around the top edge of your bag and it's called the reverse single crochet. It's also known as the crap stitch and basically you have to do this before you can apply the handle and I'll talk about the handle in just a moment but we have to do the top edging first. Let me show you how to do the crap stitch or the reverse single crochet and you have to do this once the entire bag has been put together because we're gonna go completely around the top. So let's start off and your panels will be all together at this point. The bag will pretty much be all assembled and I'm just showing you for tutorial reasons just all the different components um, doing it like this because it's just easier to see it on camera because the bag is so big. So what we have here is that we're just going to join it and basically the other panel will be attached already here and you're just go rotating around the top. So you're just gonna come into this top stitch itself 
okay and you're just going to attach uh, just fasten on your yarn. So a reverse single crochet normally we would work in this direction but we're gonna re uh, go in the reverse. So we're actually gonna go backward. So what we just need to do is coming to the stitch before this insert in grab the yarn and pull under through the stitch okay and then grab the yarn and pull through two the two loops that you see on the hook. Okay so then the next one is again coming back so we're going back grab the yarn okay and then and grab the yarn over and pull through. So coming to the river back grab the yarn pull through two. And what this is doing is creating a beautiful edge on the very top. It looks like a, it looks um, like the rounded off edges at the top and you continually do that all the way around. So you just follow the entire brim all the way around and you have to do this before you get to the handle because the handles will get into your way and then the yarn will get tangled within the handle work itself. So this is a, a reverse single. It takes a bit of getting used to if you've never done it before but stick with it because it has a beautiful edge just like you see here. It's kind of rounded off and then it creates a really beautiful look at the same time. So do that all the way around and then do your handles. The next thing we wanna concentrate is on doing the handles. So the handles are relatively easy. You already have them done and you gotta make sure that they don't actually twist on each other so when you go to put them in. We're gonna put it in through one hole on the one side. Just put it right through just like so and just kinda make it flat so don't let, any, don't let it twist or do anything weird and just kinda come in and then just put the other side into the other hole. This is not going into the other panel. This is strictly just for this one panel and you'll do this the same on both sides. So I used an extra long string here and what I wanna do is that I wanna attach these together so I can use my crochet hook or darning needle whatever you prefer. And what we're going to do is that where they're joining at this point we're going to hide that in under the, under the handle handle where you're actually grabbing onto the bag itself. And you wanna make sure that when you go to attach these things that they actually are not doing any kind of weird twists. Okay so it appears flat all the way around and up here as well. And I'm just going to continue just to kind of join it together. I'm just using a single crochet join like so. And then I'm just gonna tighten everything off and then I'm just gonna tie it into position at this point. So this will be underneath of the handle of where you're grabbing and we're going to do that part next and it's actually a really neat handle once you see it done. So here is the original bag here and you can see that this is the handle itself. This is where you're grabbing onto. So the seam line is going to be underneath of the handle itself. So it's in there somewhere. So what we want to do with this particular one is that we take the, the handle and we put it together in a way that it looks like it's even. So all we're just going to do is that we're just gonna grab some strands, two strands at one time and we're gonna continually wrap this handle over and, and over and over. It's about a four inch distance just like so. So you're gonna secure it the first time Okay and then you're going to wrap about four inches and you're gonna continually do that until you get to the nice size that you want and you do it for both sides of your handle. So both handles itself should have this. So let's quickly review what we've done today is that we learned how to do the front and the back panels. We've learned how to do the side because it's the same knowledge that you did with the side except for with it was without the hole. We did the base panel and then we did the joining and then I showed you how to just join it just really easily um, to each other. We then covered doing the reverse single crochet at the top and then we did some handles. So there's lots of great stitches of two together um, stitches within this. We learned how to do a wave. We learned how to do some attaching and reverse single crochet and overall it's a great little project in order to further your skills of crochet. Well thanks for joining me today. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Stay tuned for more free patterns and ideas coming up real soon. We'll see ya.